All right, this is it. The color grading master series that I've been talking about for a couple of weeks. Before we're going to start, I want to say special thank you to the Pascal, the cinematographer from the film On the Horizon for providing me this amazing footage and basically really for making this series of tutorials happen. So thank you so much, Pascal. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. <clears throat> And in our today tutorial, this is going to be the part number one. We're going to be taking a look at this footage right over here. I'm working in a little bit slower, I mean slower, not, I'm sorry, not slower, lower resolution. Um, I believe original source is 4K or 6K, so I downscaled it to 2K. That way, recording a little bit faster and it's easier to work around this. But we're going to achieve very same result and at the end of each tutorial I'm going to be providing downloadable power grades so you guys can actually save it and have some kind of reference from this tutorial. Let's get started our lesson and we have a shot over here of a guy sitting in a car. First of all I want to stress out and I want to make sure that you guys understand. A color grading it's not something separate that you do from the cinematography. Color grading is extension. It's a direct extension of cinematography. If you have a very poorly shot footage, you cannot do good color grading. A lot of people always asking me this question. They're, you know, I want to do this look, I want to do that look, and whenever they show me their footage, it's completely opposite of that look. So, I just want you guys to know that whenever Whenever you shoot something, keep the look of the film in mind. You can't just go completely randomly shoot the material without, you know, the proper wardrobe or, or background and expect to have a particular film look from this. Like if you guys actually um, go back and watch any of your favorite movies, you can actually can see a clear color palette that director and cinematographers were following throughout the movie. That makes color grading much easier down the line and essentially that's what gives the movie its look. You know, even if you're going to be expert in DaVinci Resolve, you can't create something out of nothing. Because, for example, changing one color into another it's very, very difficult. It's even difficult sometimes in still photography where you pretty much have 14, 16 bit of information but in particular in the film when you have film noise and a lot of other factors like codecs definitely it's not a good idea so keep cinematography and the wardrobe in mind when, when you shoot so we have this shot right over here and in my first note I'm going to remove the noise I'm gonna call it NR noise reduction and if we're going to zoom in a little bit closer, we can actually see that there's some kind of noise going on. I want you guys to know that this uh, footage was shot on red camera and it's a log. So the first thing I'm going to do is to remove noise. So I'm going to go send to chroma. Okay, that way we make our colored noise black and white. And Luma, this time I think because it's such a well shot footage, I can get away with number 3. Actually, I may even do 3.5. I'm pushing it. But, I have a lot of people asking me about using the Neat Video. Neat Video is absolutely stunning noise reduction software. However, Neat Video is extremely heavy on your computer. You know, I have really, really powerful computer and whenever I use Neat Video, the whole system just slows down. So keep in mind, if you have a feature film or some kind of documentary or basically anything longer than 30 seconds, you probably want to think twice before using neat video in every shot. So keep that in mind. Anyways, we have noise reduction. We removed a lot of noise successfully and I'm going to create another note just like this. And actually, you know what? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a different route. I'm going to do the same thing but from the color management. If we're gonna go in the color management and we're gonna go into a 3D video monitor right over here, I can select 
lot that's going to be applied by default to everything I do. That way, basically, we skipping having extra node. Now, let me explain you why would you put this node first of all. This is Rec 709 Codec 2383 D55, which is a little bit warmer because they also have um, D65. Okay, it's a little bit cooler, but we're going to stick with the D55. I really like warmer look. Uh, D55 is a basically a white point. Anyways, why would you do this? Well, back in the days, now a lot of filmmakers going after that, you know, film look. Everybody wants their footage to look like film. However, there is a reason why would you use LUT. Um, back in the days when you would be doing the color grading, now all the movie feeders or almost every movie feeder using digital projection but back then the movie would have to be put on on the special film on the film print and basically the reason why would you do this is to imitate how this movie would look in the movie theater so let's say you have done your color grading everything is nice you would go and you would just turn off the lot Okay, you, you just remove the LUT. That way, it takes away that film look on your screen. However, when that movie is going to be printed on the film, it's going to look exactly the same as you color graded. I hope that makes sense. And if not, please leave a comment below and I'm going to try to explain it a little more. And I'm also going to add more information down the line. So basically, that's why you would do this. <clears throat> I personally like realistically using it uh, better as a node because you have more control essentially but in this series of tutorials I'm gonna be covering all kinds of different variations that way you guys can understand much much better so here it is we're using it like this okay so we already have the lot applied okay and here's our shot and just so you guys know, it's already looking really, really good without even really doing anything. Also, another thing, um, when you apply LUT through this method, when you do before and after, it's a little bit harder because you're taking away that, you know, that node that you can turn off. Anyways, we'll talk a little bit more about it in the future. So, here's our shot. Let's create another node. And I'm going to call this node Exposure. And I'm going to create another node. This node is going to be my False Colors. Um, in many studios, when you do color grading, obviously, you know, we're on a budget here. So we're using the software version. A lot of professional grading monitors actually have the function of the False Color built into them. So if you can imagine, you know, a very expensive, very good color grading studio, they have, you know, maybe five or six different monitors. One for, let's say, false color. They have another monitor just for scopes. You know, they have a big projection just for video. They have the client monitor. So definitely there's a lot more things going on. However, I want to say again, special thank you to Time and Pixels for making this plugin. This plugin is definitely a lifesaver for smaller studios or people like me who does a lot of freelancing and you know I can't put 20 monitors in my room let's rename this and we're gonna call false colors okay and the reason why I'm using false color that way we can just visually see better what's going on you know basically false color is the same representation of waveform or RGB parade okay so let's turn it on and let's go in our exposure and one of the very interesting signatures of a real film look that film usually somewhere around 300 to 500 very rarely they go above that when you have this whole thing stretched you're no longer getting that film look you're actually getting video look and i know a lot of filmmakers and colorists do the same mistake you know they try to basically stretch everything like this and then they wondering, you know, oh, how come, you know, it doesn't look like, like film. It looks like video. 
And by the way, here is another example of very well shot footage. Even though I did it, you know, crazy thing, the footage actually looks very pleasant. So that's another huge benefit of very well shot footage. Anyways, let's stop playing games and let's continue. I'm going to bring shadows just a little bit, okay, because I want to... It's a, it's a night. I know a lot of filmmakers try to make night look like day. They crank everything up. I mean, there's no reason doing this. Okay, so let's check it out. Before and after. Perfect. I start getting that very nice little bottom mid-tone highlight in his skin. That's pretty much where I want to keep everything. So let me turn off the false colors. And even as of right now, I'm very happy from where I'm seeing. So let's see. Um, the footage looks very nice, very clean. Okay. Very, very good skin tones. <clears throat> and I'm going to create... Actually, let's check it out before we're going to go there. Let's check it out, the vector scope. See, we don't really have too much saturation. We're pretty much keeping everything very desaturated. So let's create another node. And in this node, I'm going to call this saturation. Okay? And I'm going to increase saturation individually, red, green, and blue. Individually per channel. That way we have a little bit more vivid colors, you know? So let's take a look. Before and after. Before and after. That definitely brought a lot of more edge to the shot. So let's see. I really, really like it. Very nice. Okay, very, very good skin tones. Okay, perfect. So let's check out this whole thing before and after. As far as, you know, getting a very pleasant look, we're actually getting there. Now, this saturation a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to the key right over here. And I'm going to put 0.700. So I'm just taking it down a notch. <clears throat> because I don't want this thing to be way too crazy. So I kind of like that. Now, let me create another node. Just like this. And in this node, I'm going to do a little bit of look. Okay? It's going to be very, very little bit. So, how I'm going to do look is I'm going to use curves. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click over here. We're going to ungang them. Basically, if you're doing the look and the gang, whatever you do, like this, for example, they they all being affected. Okay? So, and if you... Let me reset that. If you ungang them, you can individually adjust whatever you want. So, now, let me add a little bit of yellow a little bit of warmer tones into the image just like this let's check it out before and after i really like that yellow feel and also we're not even hurting his skin tones even though we definitely added a lot of warmth into the shot we're really not hurting any of the skin it still look very nice it still look very pleasant okay so that looks great let's play it back let's see what's going on um, I normally, when I do color grading, I don't like working with the secondaries. And the reason is, like I mentioned earlier, uh, film footage is slightly different than still photography. In film, you have a lot of factors that comes to play. Whenever you work with the secondaries, a lot of times it's really hard to maintain a good key for a particular color and to keep clean signal. That's the reason why I always try to stay away from the secondaries and sort of work the magic around, I guess, with exposure and all that, versus of just, you know, let's say, isolating skin tone and just pulling everything on the side and calling it a day. But that's a different story. Anyways, so now let me create another note, just like this, and I'm going to call this one Skin. Perfect. So this one, we're going to be working on his skin. Let me move the things. Let me move that little train a little bit back. Okay. That way we have more room to play. I'm actually going to do a very interesting qualification. Even though I said on like secondaries, this is, it's like a semi-secondary is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to uh, select the highlight selection. 
and I'm gonna go just like this okay that way we keeping it everything under control over here and I'm going to make a very very soft selection just like this okay and naturally we see that he got a little bit red on the nose and and what I'm gonna do with this I'm gonna try to bring that information a little bit back to the original that way it looks more natural so what I'm gonna do for his skin is just give it a little boost just like that just like that on the side before and after before and after so we start getting a little bit of that pinkish uh, feel however I think I think it's a little bit too much so I'm gonna go to the key and I'm gonna cut it down by half okay so we have very barely anything but basically that gives much more life feel rather than having everything pretty much uniformed so let's check it out before and after we barely did any changes but if we're gonna go and check out before and after I mean we have a really really huge difference in this shot considering how relatively easy we're going so far okay so that's really good <clears throat> let's bring him back in focus okay you can see, let me put it over here. You kind of can see right over here before and after, before and after. Very slight difference. You probably cannot see it on your uh, YouTube, but trust me, it's there. Okay, and finally, you know, I'm really, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. What I can do uh, as an option, I can create a node and I can call it highlights okay and I'm just gonna go to the qualifier just like this I'm gonna do a selection let's say just like that okay like like this looks fine let me see a little bit more okay like that looks really good it should work in our case and what I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna gain all those things uh, RGB channel and I'm going to bring it down slightly okay just like that you asking probably why I'm doing this because it's sort of opposite what I was saying however I really want to do a very nice pastel look in this shot in this series of tutorials I'm gonna be trying to do a different looks for every shot that way you guys can learn and see what is actually available and what can we do so check it out before and after before and after and the skin is sort of looks dead like this and this is the reason why I was saying that I really like to have everything in individual node because you get ultimately more freedom like that so I'm gonna cut this by by half okay so let's check it out before and after before and after very nice I really like that and in my final note for this particular shot I'm gonna be doing a film grain film film grain okay just like this and by the way let's take a look what's going on with the false colors and as far as exposure and everything I'm really happy we're still keeping everything despite our the highlight shot basically you can see that I just minimize a very peak of the highlights and everything is still looking pretty good so I don't need false colors anymore I'm gonna take it off okay let's see what we're doing over here and in the film grain I'm gonna add film convert there's three different ways to add film grain there's film grain built in in DaVinci Resolve you can use film grain as the matte or you can do film convert so let's do film convert right now out of all uh, film grade emulation film convert is absolutely my favorite and by the way <clears throat> some people ask me about 3d lot size basically think of it as a density the higher the number the more 
I guess, information you can call it, you have. So if you're imitating film look, basically the higher the number, the better. You get much cleaner and finesse selection. So even though obviously this movie is 35 full frame, I like to give it Super 16 because I was grading it sort of to Super 16 look. And I can turn down the grain over here, but again, I'm going to go in the key and I'm going to turn down the grain right over here. So I'm going to take down a third of it. I'm going to keep 700. Okay. Let's see. Like that again looks a little bit too much. And I'm going to do 500. 500 looks perfect. Very pleasant to my eye. And I really like how everything looks. So let me go on the full screen. Let's play this thing back. Very, very nice. I really like that. Let's see. The shot for a second gets a little bit out of focus. But check it out. Before and after. Before and after. I think I can still make a little bit less noise. Probably 300. So I'm just going to use the third. That way it's not too distracting. Perfect. Now it looks really, really good. So let's check it out before and after so we're actually keeping a very natural skin tone we sort of added a little bit kind of taking three or taking two whatever whatever the part is they they all have sort of instead of teal and orange they kind of have green i guess and orange like that so we sort of have that look going on and at the same time we kept everything looking very very natural so let's play it back. And again, I'm sorry I have such a slow playback because I have recording going on and a few other things. But basically, I am very happy with this particular shot. I think it looks very cinematic. I think the colors look very clean, very nice. Let's check it out again before and after. Very, very nice colors. So as a colorist, and I'm sure if the director or cinematographer would be sitting in a room, I'm sure they would like it. However, you never know. Anyways, this was our first part of the Master Series color grading tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and more parts coming very, very soon. Take care.